Okay, now that we end the discussion on Aisha's role, let's comment on something that's also associated to Aisha and many people from Ahlul Sunnah see it as a virtue for Aisha. One of the reasons why they consider her to be so close to the Prophet and a woman of virtue is because the Prophet is buried where? In her room, in her house. When the Prophet died, she says in Bukhari and in other sources that the Prophet was buried in my own room. So let's discuss the house of the Prophet, the logistics of it, how was it structured and uh, since we were just discussing Aisha, let's also see if she, he was really buried there. What are some pieces of evidence we have that the Prophet was not buried in the house of Aisha? Number one, Aisha's house was very small and generally the rooms of the Prophet's wives were quite small. See when you hear the word house, don't think of a house, it was a room around the mosque of the Prophet he constructed rooms for his wives. So a wife just had a small room, that's all she had, that was her house. How do we know that her house was so small? From Sunni hadith. Look at this hadith in Bukhari. Aisha says in this hadith in Bukhari, Kuntu anamu bayna yaday Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi from me wa sallam she says basically when I would sleep, he was praying my feet would be in his place of prayer, like in his place of sujood, if he wants to sit and do sujood, I was sleeping there. sajad, when he wanted to do sujood, ghamazani, he'd basically like pat me on the uh, leg and I would take my leg, like fold my leg. فَإِذَا قَامْ When he'd get up, again I'd stretch my leg. وَالْبُيُوتُ يَوْمَئِذٍ لَيْسَ فِيهَا مَصَابِيَةٍ She says our rooms during those days didn't have oil lamps, it was dark. So I'm sleeping, the Prophet wants to pray, so I'm in his way. My legs are in his way because when you sleep you're stretching your legs, right? So when he wants to do sujood, he'll like give me a signal, you know, fold your legs. I fold it, he does his sujood and then I extend them again. <laughs> This is Bukhari, remember not our sources, this is Sahih al-Bukhari. Okay, now there's two ways of looking at this hadith and we'll go with the easier one, not the tougher one. But if we want to be tough on Aisha, we'll say that she had no adab, no etiquette with the Prophet. Sleep in another part of you, why are you sleeping in his way and he's praying, who would do that? <laughs> So in her defense, which proves our point, we'll say the room was small. It was so small that if she would lie down, like let's say you're what, five feet, five and a half feet, if you're lying down, there really is no other place in the room for the Prophet to pray. So he was praying in the midnight prayer, let's say, because it was wajib on the Prophet to pray the midnight prayer, and you know, she needs to sleep, it's okay. She's tired, she needs to sleep. So when the Prophet needed to do his sujood, she'd bend her, she'd fold her legs. Now this version indicates the room was super small. Question, who's buried in that room? The Prophet, Umar and Abu Bakr. How do you fit all these three in a room where the Prophet barely would fit in it with Aisha? You tell me. So we know the Prophet was buried in another place, not in this room because according to Aisha's own testimony, that's how crammed it was. The Prophet when he needed to pray, he had to like give her a signal, you know, fold your legs, I want to do my sujood. She says that in Bukhari. So the indications are the room was super small. It's not a room that you can have the Prophet's full body be buried and then Abu Bakr and Umar to his sides. How do you fit all those people in that small room? when the Prophet can barely pray if she's sleeping in it. So that's a clue that the Prophet was not buried in her small room, he was buried in a bigger room. Any objections to this first point that we're making? Is it a valid point? Any counter arguments? <laughs> the dead? Well no, we cannot. <laughs> According to Islamic law, the person has to be stretched in their grave. Yes. As much as we're next to the rooms. Correct. 
pretty much what you said, it's a small room at home. Why was he not buried in the masjid? No, why was he not praying in the masjid with a small room? Like no, because the Prophet sometimes uh, in the middle of the night, he'd pray in his own room. He didn't have to go to the masjid. Sometimes he's just praying in his own room. The nafila, the extra prayers, you can pray them in your house, that's fine. So the Prophet didn't always pray the mustahabat in the masjid. We also have sources that he'd pray in his house or the house of Lady Fatima or some of his wife's house. Sure, that's not a problem. Okay. So, and by the way, by the way, one, one other, another point I forgot to mention. Aisha says, after the Prophet was buried in my room and Umar and Abu Bakr, I stayed living in it. Yes, I was going to ask it was wrong. She says that, I stayed living in it until I died. Okay, if that room is so small, you've got three graves in there, where are you living? Are you sleeping on these graves? Where do you pray? How do you live in there? Something's not adding up. <laughs> Number two. Well, it's the Prophet's grave. I know, but it's unusual, yeah. It may even be disrespectful to be like living next to the Prophet's grave, yeah. The second point, Aisha narrates the following in Musnad Ahmad ibn Hanbal and Al-Hakim al-Naysaburi in his book Al-Mustadrak. He says this is a Sahih Hadith according to the conditions of Bukhari and Muslim. Listen, listen to this hadith from Aisha. كُنْتُ أَدْخُلُ بَيْتِيَ الَّذِي فِيهِ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ I would go to my room in which the Prophet's grave was there. وَإِنِّي وَاضِعٌ ثَوْبِي She says basically I would remove my hijab because it's my house. وَأَقُولْ إِنَّ مَا هُوَ زَوْجِي وَأَبِي I would say it's the Prophet's grave and my father Abu Bakr when he was buried. Because when Abu Bakr died where did they have him buried next to the Prophet? So she's like okay when I go to their to, the, to my own room, I would remove my hijab, it's okay you know, um, I don't need to be careful with my clothing because it's my husband and it's my dad. When Umar was buried in my room, now Umar is not mahram to her, she says, I swear by God, ever since Umar was buried in it, I would never remove my clothes in the room out of uh, haya and, you know, uh, shyness and decency for Umar. Because, you know, this is a non mahram man buried in my room, so I just don't feel comfortable taking off my hijab. Okay, is it really plausible that she lived years and years in her hijab in that small little room? not taking it off even once. Look, this is very unlikely, very unlikely. It's a very unusual situation. She, she stayed in hijab all her life. Outside you can't take it. Inside your own, your own house you can't take it. Then she, what, Aisha lived 20, 30 years in hijab? If they're dead, why does it matter? Yeah, she says, uh, you know, out of respect for Umar because he's not mahram. But are we gonna believe that Aisha for like three decades I don't know how long she lived after Umar, a long time. She lived after Umar a good 30, 40 years. After Uthman, Imam Ali alayhi salam, Imam al Hassan alayhi salam, uh, shortly before Karbala she passed away. Are you telling me that this lady never took off her hijab in 30, 40 years? I find that hard to believe. So this is all an indication that the Prophet was not buried in her room. She had her room to herself. <laughs> yes. I have a question, so if we're talking about that she's buried in the room with them. No, no, she's not buried there, she's buried in Baqi. Oh. She's living in the room with them. She's living in the room. Yeah. Well, let's say if she is living and they're passed away and we know that the people interact in the graves, like, does that even work if we're speaking about it logically? Like, do you still interfere with these people? Or is it because it's the Prophet, it's something different? Would it be well, no, we can. We don't interfere with the dead, but we're saying that just logistically this doesn't add up. Having three graves in such a small room, and she says, I never took off my hijab because of Umar. You know, this doesn't add up. These claims just don't add up. Yes. Some people cannot visit the graves. That's number three. Or actually number four, I'll get to it. Number three, a number of historians have narrated that Aisha stated in her will to give her room to Abdullah ibn Zubair. Zubair, the famous companion of the Prophet, the cousin of the Prophet. And Abdullah ibn Zubair, so he took the room of Aisha 
and also he bought the room of Sauda, another wife of the Prophet. Now it's very clear that Ibn Zubair didn't get the room the Prophet was buried in, nor was he in charge of that room. So it's clear the Prophet was buried in another room because he got hold of Aisha's room. And nowhere in history do we see that Ibn Zubair was in charge of the room the Prophet was buried in. So they are two rooms, they're not the same room. In fact, Ibn Sa'ad narrates in his tabaqat that Muawiyah bought Aisha's room for a lot of money. He gave her so much money, he told her as long as you're alive you stay in your room, after you die I want your room. And she accepted and he sent her the money and she distributed it to the people. Another historical account say it was not Muawiyah, it was uh, basically Ibn Zubair. He is the one who gave her money so she would uh, give up her room. In any case we have historical accounts that she gave up her room to someone and we know that the room she gave up was not the room the Prophet was buried in, it was another room. Because how do you sell the room that the Prophet's buried in? And we don't have any historical accounts that they had the wilaya or the possession of the Prophet's tomb. It would have been mentioned if they were the ones who... Exactly, they would have, it would have been mentioned, it's not mentioned. Number four, what the brother mentioned, we have so many hadiths that the people would go to the Prophet's tomb and they would actually supplicate there. And even, even there is a hadith from Aisha. This hadith has been narrated in the Sunni source called Sunan al Darami. And a number of Sunni scholars, such as a Shaykh Abdullah al Siddiq al Ghimari, he says this is a Sahih hadith. This is an authentic hadith. What is the hadith? It's from Aus ibn Abdullah. He says there was a severe drought in Medina. So they came to Aisha, they told her, we're experiencing a severe dr drought. You're the wife of the Prophet. Give us some tips, what do we do? She said, do you see the tomb of the Prophet? Qabr al-Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. He says remove part of the ceiling so that the tomb of the Prophet is directly under the sky, so that there's no barrier. Remove part of this, remember those ceilings were not concrete ceilings, they were made from uh, palm trees, right? So you could remove the ceiling. He says we did what Aisha told us, the rain came down until everything became green in Medina. So through the blessing of the Prophet's tomb being exposed under the sky, Allah sent down the rain. That's the rahmah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. Question, where was the Prophet's tomb when this happened? In her room. Is it likely it was in her room? And all this time the people come and go and they visit the Prophet's tomb and the ceiling is removed? What, Aisha's gonna now sleep under the sun? Under the open sky? I'm not gonna believe that. And all these men coming to the Prophet's tomb and she's, she's, she's in her room, like where is she going to go? Doesn't add up. Very clear the Prophet was buried elsewhere, not in her room. Number five, Ahmad ibn Hanbal, he narrates in his book Al-Musnad from Aisha, she says we did, we did not come to be aware of the Prophet's burial, until we heard the sound of the shovels at the end of the night. Laylat al Arba'a. It was Tuesday night, the night of Wednesday. Question If the Prophet was buried in her room, how come she didn't know about the burial? until she heard the uh, sound of the uh, shovels. Not, the masahi is, is, is basically, it's a tool that allows you to bury the grave, like cover it, seal the grave. Where was she? If it's in your room, it's everything is in front of you, your small little room. How come she says, I was not aware the Prophet is being buried until 
until I heard the sound at the end of the night of the uh, shovels or whatever those tools were. If it's in your own room, then you see the Prophet's body's there, they're preparing him for the burial, you see everything, it's your room. So it's clearly it was a neighboring room, not her room. See when somebody's sitting in their room and they tell you, look I didn't know that so and so was being buried until I heard the noise of the digging and stuff. Naturally where would you be when you say something like that? In that same room or in a neighboring room? Where would you be naturally if you say something like that? Neighboring room, exactly, because if it's in your own room, you're, nothing is surprising, you know from, from the first minute you know what's going on, it's, it's, it's a small little room. Somebody's being buried here in this room and, you're in, and this is your house, this room. Are you going to be caught by surprise? Like, oh at the end of the night suddenly I discovered now they've buried the Prophet. Obviously he was being buried in a different room and that's why she was surprised, because if he was in her room, she did not need to be surprised. In any case, we have uh, many, many, you know, we, ha we have reason to believe that the Prophet was not buried uh, in Aisha's room, he was buried in another room. Now what that room is, what happened, where did the Prophet actually uh, pass away, was he in the house of Aisha as he narrates, or he was in the, uh, or in, in the lap of Aisha as she narrates, or he was in the lap of Imam Ali this is something we'll discuss later at the end of the biography course when we get there.